Detecting gravitational waves is no easy feat. The stretching and squeezing effect is so tiny that scientists have to come up with innovative ways to make sure these ripples in space don't pass by undetected. One of the problems with detecting gravitational wave signals comes from seismic oscillations. To overcome this problem, the detectors use a quadruple suspension system for the mirrors, suspending them from four pendulums. This damps out high frequency motions above 10 Hz. An active control system moves the whole mirror system to counteract the lower frequency movements. There are also important techniques to compensate for the expansion of the mirrors caused by the laser heating them up, and baffles in the beam lines reduce scattering of the laser. To improve its sensitivity, the laser is reflected backwards and forwards within the arms several hundred times. We end up with the sensitivity of LIGO looking like this. The vertical axis shows the displacement of the mirrors due to various noise, and the horizontal shows the frequency. The lower the noise, the higher the sensitivity. We can see that at low frequencies, displacement due to seismic oscillations dominate. The peak here is the resonance of the pendulum system. There are ongoing efforts to further reduce this low frequency noise. At high frequencies, the dominant effect is from quantum noise. This is because we are limited by how well we can measure the brightness of the laser beam. This can be improved by turning the power of the laser beam up. LIGO is more sensitive to signals between a few tens of hertz and a few hundred hertz. The sensitivity of LIGO is astounding and it is able to detect relative changes in the length of one part in a billion trillion. That's equivalent to the mirrors moving by just one thousandth the width of a proton. On the 14th of September 2015, one of these tiny gravitational wave signals was detected by LIGO. By comparing the signal to the predicted signal, scientists are able to find out more about the origin of the gravitational waves. To determine the mass of the black holes and their distance, we can compare with theoretical models. The parameters of the model are adjusted until the predicted signal matches up to the data. The closer the black holes, the larger the amplitude of the detected signal. The mass of the black holes can be changed. The lower the mass, the higher the frequency. This gives an initial first guess which is produced by automatic algorithms within minutes of a detection. The gravitational wave detection from September 2015 was found to come from two black holes with masses of 29 and 36 solar masses, each about 30 times the mass of the Sun, but just 200 kilometers across. As the black holes orbit, they lose energy through gravitational waves and they spiral in towards each other quicker and quicker. The energy released from the collision, in the form of gravitational waves, was equivalent to three solar masses. This was hundreds of times more than the energy released from any other event that had been observed. The peak power from this collision, nearly 40 trillion 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 watts, was more power than the combined light of all the stars in all the galaxies in the entire visible universe. All that power was released in a fraction of a second from this one single event. Yet all we detected here on Earth was two mirrors moving back and forth by one thousandth the width of a proton. This was the first gravitational wave source detected, but there have been more since then. The signals vary for each merger event. The higher the frequency of the collisions, the lower the combined masses of the black holes, and the higher the amplitude, the closer they are. We can also work out the masses of the two black holes relative to each other, and whether they are spinning by looking at how the frequency and the amplitude evolve over time. Black hole collisions, however, aren't the only sources of gravitational waves. On the 17th of August 2017, the first ever gravitational wave signal from two colliding neutron stars was detected. Shortly afterwards, other astronomical telescopes were also able to observe the glow of light produced by this neutron star collision. They could do this because they had a reasonable idea of where on the sky the collision could be seen. The location of the neutron stars was calculated by comparing the exact time of the arrival of gravitational waves at detectors and using principles similar to triangulation. With two detectors, we can only localise the source to a ring on the sky. With the addition of a third detector, Advanced Virgo, providing another time difference for better triangulation, the location can be narrowed down to a much smaller patch of the sky. In August 2017, this was how astronomers knew where to look to see the flash of the neutron star collision. 
In its current arrangement, LIGO is sensitive to black hole merger events out to a few billion light years. This results in the detection of a merger every couple of months. The final design sensitivity of LIGO is to be two to three times more sensitive. This means we'd be able to see two to three times further out, which corresponds to a volume of space 10 to 30 times larger. The increased sensitivity should allow for the detection of many more mergers, perhaps as frequent as every few days. In the future, with the increase in detected events, we will have much more data to analyse, giving us a better understanding of these colossal events.